They were bold, powerful and unmistakably Western. The British rail class 52 locomotives, known affectionately as the Westerns, were more than just machines. They were symbols of regional pride, post-war ambition and a fascinating, if ultimately flawed, engineering path not taken. Join us as we take a nostalgic journey through the rise, reign and retirement of one of Britain's most distinctive diesel locomotive classes. In the 1950s, British Rail was at a crossroads. Steam was choking on its final breath and the 1955 modernisation plan promised a new age of diesel and electric traction. But while most regions looked to diesel electric power, the Western region chose a different path, diesel hydraulics, inspired by the success of German Bundesbahn locomotives. And thus, the Class 52 was born. Built between 1961 and 1964 at Swindon and Crewe Works, 74 locomotives emerged, each carrying a proud name, starting with Western. From Western Champion to Western Fusilier, these engines weren't just workhorses, they were personalities. Under the hood, each Class 52 was powered by two Maybach MD655 diesel engines, delivering a combined 2,700 horsepower through a hydraulic transmission. With a top speed of 90 miles per hour, these Coco locomotives were fast, agile and impressively light on the track. But here's the twist. While they were technically advanced, they were also uniquely incompatible with most of British Rail's infrastructure. Diesel hydraulic maintenance was unfamiliar to many depots, and spare parts weren't always readily available. Was the Western region ahead of its time, or just stubbornly different? Throughout the 1960s, the Class 52s became a familiar sight across the Western region. They hauled flagship expresses like the Cornish Riviera Express, the Bristolian, and countless inter-regional passenger and freight services. With their elegant lines, maroon or later BR blue liveries, and a distinctive growl from their twin engines, the Westerns earned a devoted following. For many rail fans, they were the last great characters of the pre-corporate British rail era. But even in their prime, the writing was on the wall. British Rail's move towards standardisation in the 1970s left no room for these non-standard, region-specific machines. Diesel electric traction became the norm, with locomotives like the Class 47 proving easier and cheaper to run system-wide. By 1977, just 16 years after the first Western was introduced, the entire class was withdrawn. Was it fair? Maybe not. But in an age of economic tightening and technological rationalisation, sentiment came second. Though their time in service was short, the Westerns were too iconic to disappear entirely. Seven Class 52 locomotives were saved from the scrapyard by passionate preservationists. D. 1015 Western Champion, perhaps the most famous survivor, restored to mainline condition, and operated by the Diesel Traction Group, currently under overhaul. D1013 Western Ranger and D1062 Western Courier, both preserved at the Seven Valley Railway. D1023 Western Fusilier, part of the National Railway Museum collection, currently on display at Didcot. D1041 Western Prince and D1048 Western Lady, in various stages of restoration. D1010, Western Campaigner, based at the West Somerset Railway and undergoing a major rebuild. Each one is a living, breathing reminder of a time when the Western region dared to be different. This is the question that divides historians and enthusiasts alike in operational terms, the Class 52s were not a success. Their short working life, mechanical complexity and regional limitations made them impractical in the long run. But from a cultural and historical point of view, they were a roaring success. They were stylish, they were fast, they were loved 
and they embodied a spirit of innovation and identity that's rarely seen on Britain's railways today. The Class 52 Westerns weren't just locomotives, they were statements. They were the last hurrah of regional independence before British Rail became a uniform sea of blue and grey. And although they're long gone from the main line, their legacy endures. Whenever a preserved engine rumbles to life, the sound of history rolls down the tracks once more. So, were the Westerns brave pioneers or doomed rebels? That's for you to decide. If you enjoyed this nostalgic journey into the world of British diesel hydraulics, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. We've got more railway history, hidden gems and forgotten giants coming your way. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss the next departure. And let us know in the comments. Did you ever ride behind a western? Thanks for watching and until next time, stay on track.